Good morning children welcome back to our English classroom today we are going to discuss about punctuation marks actually I am not taking completely but we need to discuss the very important area which is the part of your third unit okay so in this unit page number 59 you can see in the language focus that is the ellipsis okay the next one is page number 61 in your textbook you can see useful punctuations pairs of brackets dashes or commas okay the next one is page number 62 you can see the hyphen and dashes okay so based on this i'm going to explain about to the punctuation marks okay i hope you are ready to listen the class so let me introduce at first what is punctuation marks and why we are using punctuation marks okay it's a set of signs or symbols or it's a kind of signs or symbols which gives to the reader how the sentence is constructed or what is the state of the statements okay so the we wanted to learn and here we have 14 punctuation marks in english language so let us discuss at first the 14 punctuation marks okay so at first look at the board you can see the punctuation marks the first one is period period or the full stop second one is exclamatory mark third one is comma Fourth one is semicolon. Fifth one is colon. Sixth one is dash. Seventh one is hyphen. Eighth one is brackets. Ninth one braces. Tenth one parenthesis. Eleventh one is question marks. Twelfth one is apostrophe. Thirteenth one quotation marks. Fourteenth one ellipsis the plural form of ellipsis is ellipsis e double l i p s e s so from this out of 14 we need to learn or we need to focus only five punctuation marks today based on your english unit three okay the first one is we need to discuss about the comma second one is we need to discuss about the dash third one is hyphen fourth one is bracket and the fifth one is ellipsis so i hope you are ready to listen okay then so let's go and discuss the following punctuation marks okay this ellipsis ellipsis it represented by three periods. Do you know what is period? Yes, this is the period. Okay, this is one period and it represents the three periods. Okay, the second one is ellipsis is used in writing or printing to indicate an omission. It helps us to indicate an omission. Okay, so this will help us especially for the readers. Third one is, it is frequently used within quotations to jump from one phrase to another. Okay, so it is frequently used in quotations to jump from one phrase to another. Let us see the example. From the example, you can understand. Omission, how to. How to use ellipsis in the case of an omission. She began to count. One, two, three, four, and it comes to ellipsis over here. Then close the quotation mark, means speech mark, until she got to ten. Then went to find him. So it is an incomplete part and it seems like an omission. Okay, so ellipsis will help us to indicate an omission so look at your textbooks there you can see 
the first one is it lets the reader imagine the missing details that's what we discussed just now you had better finish your homework or else second one is it to build suspenses it to build suspenses sometimes it creates the suspense for it as look at the sentence cautiously they open the box then three periods means ellipses it comes because it gives the suspense third one is it shows something has been omitted to be or not to be the same of the first one because it uh, represents the omission okay so to be or not to be then what it comes we don't know what is okay so you can use such cases ellipses okay so this is the beginning of a famous shakespearean quotation okay we have three cases to use the comma in a different ways okay so the first one is direct address second one is separation of two complete sentence how to because mainly in the closes we are using comma to separating the statements okay so the next one is third one is separating list or elements within the sentence okay these are the three cases in which we are normally using commas okay let us see the cases the first one is direct address okay uh, thanks for all your help comma jane who said this jane said what he said 
thanks for all your help. Okay. Next one is separation of two complete sentences. Okay, sir. So complete sentences means separation of two clauses. We went to the movies. The first clause or first statement is we went to the movies, comma, and then we went out to lunch. Here we can see two completed actions, but it is being separated by comma. Okay, the next one is separating list or elements within sentences. How can we separate the list or elements? Jane wanted the black, green, comma, and blue dress. Listen, Jane wanted the black, comma, separating the list or elements. Jean wanted the black, green and blue dress. I Fifth one is brackets. Brackets are the square of notation. Notation means it is the simple or the series in which we are using. Okay, so uh, in the case of bracket, this is the simple in which we are using mainly. And it is used for technical explanations or to clarify meaning exactly so most probably we are using the bracket for technical explanation if you want to give any explain further explanation or to clarify the meaning okay if you remove the informations in the brackets if you remove the informations from the brackets means if you remove the brackets the sentence still make a perfect sense the sentence which will make a perfect sense i'll give you the example which can be seen in your textbook page number 62 so choose the best phrase to go inside the brackets in the sentence look at the c the south pole is on the continent of Antarctica. You can see or select the best phrase from the box itself what will come in the bracket. The South Pole means the southern most point on earth. So what it says? It is used for technical explanation inside the brackets you can see the technical explanations or the information or to clarify the meaning okay if you remove the informations in the brackets the sentence still make a perfect sense actually in this bracket words or the sentence will have a perfect sense it can stand by alone okay so look at here the southernmost point on earth what is it the south pole the south pole the southern most point on earth is on the continent of antarctica okay so what you want to do you have to find out and choose the best phrase to go inside the bracket in this sentences now do you understand what is bracket so can you please do the activity which which is given page number 62 in your textbook okay so i hope you understand the punctuations five punctuations only we have discussed over here because that is only the mandatory for your unit three okay so we don't want to discuss the 40 punctuations I hope you understand the five punctuations which is given in your textbook clearly and we'll see you soon later with our next module till then take care.